Yeah. Your next group's going to be showing up. Yeah. Well, they are. Yeah. <laughs> are they showing up? Is it still raining? Yeah. Oh, well, there's the next group. Oh, sorry. We, we were hoping to get finished. Um, we're just going to, I'm just going to, if you want to come with us as well, I'm going to give a, a few of you inside of the house. We already did the inside and the dancing exercise. I've never been one of you to stop talking. <laughs> so you can join us and then we'll go inside afterwards or, okay, so as I t told just you. the umbrella. Uh, okay, the steel roof, it was a different construction for the uh, uh, mud room compared to the Yeah, room. I, I know. All it's okay. We, we could do the tour. And facing west, it's not that north, far. and east can open up directly. And I do open them up when it's cool outside. But as soon as it gets hot, I quickly close them and I start the little bucket bed. So you can see. It's 119 or 120 feet. There should be at least 125 feet of air because whether that air comes into those tubes at minus 25 or uh, degrees Celsius or plus 30 degrees Celsius, by the time it gets into here, it's at the temperature of the ground. It takes, so someone said, what happens if I did you know, a, a, a snake type? They said, you need less space and maybe it could be used for someone who doesn't have the of the footage that I have, as long as, but by, by causing all those turns, you have, who is it, the greater risk of condensation. condensation. So by not, by only having the one bend and the bend here, and remember that it's much lower uh, at that, at that end than at this end. Anyone who's joining us, the group that was here before, we're just finishing off, but you're welcome to join us, so we'll, we'll, I'll just invert our yeah. talk <laughs> so uh, so I hope that uh, if some things don't seem like where how does he get that together that could be because I've already started talking about it inside is that okay with everyone yeah. Yeah. okay so the propane tank well as soon as the little wind machine is going up that is going I filled that up to 80% six years ago and I'm at now 35% and that's only for when I started the um, uh, the uh, generator because how many uh, person asked me how many times does your generator go on as your backup system I said it goes on uh, it's averaging four times a year twice a year always the start of the winter and in the middle of uh, summer so it's usually May and November so yesterday I put on the generator just to make sure it was working and guess what it gave me a, it gave me a note oil needs changing so I'll, I'll do that but so I only use, I only put it on twice which means only twice last winter did the state of charge of my battery bank go beneath 60% the most in any one year was the first year I was here because I had it recycled the battery recycling at 66% because I was worried how, how the battery was going to last I we then further adjusted it down to 60 so it, it came on four times that year so I know that if I don't need to have that generator and I have that wind machine generating power uh, it's not there yet. when I need it, then, <laughs> then then I won't need that propane tank. So, okay, so there's my little woodshed. Uh, inside that uh, 120 by 120 foot is my uh, rodent, coyote, and all uh, bad uh, four-legged creatures. She's a great Pyrenees and she does a wonderful job. And... Uh, She's now sitting out by a, by a, a bush way out there. Oh, she's here? Her name is Sophie. Good girl. Her name is Sophie. She's 100 pounds of energy. And if, if you put your arm out and she's mad at you, really, really mad, she can crack your, your bones. <laughs> okay, quickly, let's go. So you notice all around the house is that six, seven feet of gravel that acts as the red water. car up around and park behind one of those. Oh. oh okay, very good. Okay. So you see, as I said before, these six solar panels, four of case, give me most of my power in the winter. Because when this has snow in it, you get the reflection. I purposely have them at a certain height so that in the summer when the when the sun is the highest, it won't form a shadow on, on the solar panels 
and in the winter, in case the snow builds up, it won't cover the solar panels. So I originally had them down to here, and I, I looked at my some of my old records, and I said I need to be at least 36 to 39 inches. So we went up a few inches, and you notice I said the solar panels, the back of them, like right in here, is at least three to four inches away from the wall to minimize the amount of heat behind the solar panel to optimize how well they're going to run. I've been at many places where the solar panel is within an inch or two and the complaint they get is it's so sunny but I'm only getting about they're, they're 150 watt panels why can't I get, never get more than 100 watts out of them? Because the power is being lost because of the heat. So and the same thing on the roof you see that they're, they're a certain distance above the steel roof. I went to steel and you notice I put much more distance between the steel roof and the backs than I have on the wall because you still get a little bit of snow build up underneath. Not much and like I said so if I was given permission to have the wind machine when I built the place I would have had six panels here and I think I had four up there but because I couldn't do that I added to make two rows of five up there because the amount of kilowatts I was losing in the wind machine I wanted to pick up with the solar panels. All right, so as you can see, you go further with solar hot water. And again, all, all this solar work, as you can see, comes up and goes up through there and over top of, uh, of the ceiling. So in here, this is the smallest form of, uh, or smallest size of solar thermal a water heating system that's good for three people living most of the time now I was always asked this question where do you live I said I live in Gray County and they'd say isn't it awfully gray in Gray County and you're promoting <laughs> solar I said yeah and if it works in Gray County it works anywhere <laughs> <laughs> but but the whole idea is that right now the house is using solar active for producing power, but solar passive through the windows. The, the, the next stage in diversity will be the wind machine. And but the biggest one is the ability of the house to maintain and moderate the temperature inside the house. So we don't have to produce as much energy here or through the sun. So um, when you can now, I think I, I think I may have said this uh, two or three or four times. What I've done is not best may not be the best for you. It just happens to be where I was at five six years ago, and this seemed to work best for my particular physical circumstance. And as I said to you, that if I was to start over again, I would do a few things differently. I have, I would not have necessarily this rectangular shape. I seem to have grown more fond of the geodesic dome. <laughs> and so, so basically, the, and, and the steel roof uh, also has other advantages that you don't have uh, any type of uh, yearly or daily or monthly leakage of the material that the shingles are basically made of that can accumulate. So, uh, any questions with what I've mentioned? Well, right. steel is recyclable. Yes, well that's the other thing and, and, and the one thing is is that people say, oh they're so loud, how are you ever going to be able to sleep if you have heavy rains? Well, what happened is because, remember I, remember I was showing you the inner block where you live and then the roof that has no the insulation there is as if you don't hear anything you're hearing it from the outside coming in from the windows not from the roof so I, I just found that, that the, the noise was not a big hopefully not, not a big issue so now the other thing was how did I come up now, the walls are positioned in this way so that on March 20th and September 22nd the sun comes directly oh, sorry. <laughs> you, you thought, you thought, I, you, 
the sun comes directly along this wall, over top like that, because in between March and uh, uh, September, what ends up happening is the sun is higher than that, and so it goes further over, and the overhang prevents the, uh, the light, even though it's, it could be you know, up in there, on the horizon, it never gets inside the house past the 17 inch window sill. In the winter, it's lower, and so if I'm standing here, we go up there and cut across and make an arc that would always enter into the house. So I, so when I calculated the amount of overhang without east troughs, uh, I only have east troughs on the on the other side. Uh, so. So basically, I, I've tried to do my best to minimize the amount of sun coming in in the summer and optimize it. the eight inch blocks but I don't put sand in them like I do above grade but I have the, the eight inch block insulation and then six inch blocks yeah. so I this only use blocks in case there's any movement in, in the ground of which I was told by the nuclear people that we don't get any kind of shocks here whatsoever which is not true so I tried to stay away from using concrete foundations so, and so is it a double? Uh, eight inch insulation, six inch. A, a block? Yes, okay. below grade. And other than that, uh, the outdoors is not as much to see. If, you know, once I get the wind machine up in April, which will be approximately, approximately 70 feet due. But remember I was telling you the story that when I came here, it was a blizzard and I didn't know whether I wanted a place. Mm -hmm. So the highest spot, except for going into the bush, was well, someplace around here or just over there and finally when the blizzard stopped and you know, after me asking God to, so I could see whether I wanted to buy this lot uh, I noticed that see, well, I put the house over there or there it's not whether I was going to buy the place it's where do I put the house <laughs> and as soon as I went over there I started hearing the traffic because the good thing about traffic is like, you didn't hear these cars until they got where the earth prevents them from hearing, so that's why uh, I have just uh, made a, a deal with the uh, uh, Great Salvo Conservation Authority. We're putting 3,000 trees in a big U shape. Southern part, two rows going across, 12 rows going to the north. And so that within uh, 10, 15 years, the amount of noise pollution will be diminished as well. So. By putting those 3,000 trees in, I don't feel so bad about using a semi-renewable source of uh, wood in my wood stove. I try to compensate and balance it off. So right now, as I said, I'm planting all the trees on the previous place I was, and I'm only using just a little over a bush cord. I feel that my bank account of carbon usage or storage is still, I'm still in the positive. In other words, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saving, sequestering more than I'm actually using. So with those, once those trees start to grow after the, the two or three years, I, I figure that whoever lives here after me, they can use wood, wood and as an old user, and never feel that they're taking away more than, they're, than, the, than the property's putting back. Um, any, so, that's basically it for out here. If you notice, I have it nice and high, and uh, even with a few trees, I find that since these panels do the most in the, in the winter, the, the sun doesn't have to go through two, two, two thick branches. 
since I've kept this as clear as possible, we're, there's actually two trees right close to where we were. Those are the two that I had uh, removed so that it would not affect the solar panels. You said that the, the trusses are resting on the outer? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so what you have is it's resting on the outer wall, not on the inner wall, and so therefore, because in between there is just insulation, you don't get the bridging aspect. And the other thing is that because they're on they're on the outside wall, they're right, really attached to the brick work right at ground level, giving it even more stability than if it was on the other one. I think it's about time. I think we're starting to feel a little bit of snow. And you mentioned when you you put the wind in, you're going to invest in an electric car. Yes, so I am. You can charge it. Yes, and. The charge uh, center will be 120 volt, not 240. Yeah, yeah, a trickle charge. And basically for me, since I'm going to be here, I'm, re I'm retired, I will not have to say, geez, it's only been six hours, let's see how much power. It doesn't matter for me whether it's all day or all night if I'm going to be here most of the time. So the restriction of how slow it is is not a big a deal for the average person. So I've already figured that out, and the charging center is going to be... Uh, Yeah. yeah so, so for me the next step would be uh again the, the biggest reason why i haven't done that so far is because of my lack in this area so uh, i think i mentioned being a baker i'm, I'm living off of old age security canada pension plan plus doing a little bit of work on the side so um oh thank you very much for making thank you how much did this place cost me if I was to say this place cost me per square foot, and I'm including all the renewable energy equipment inside and out, uh, did it cost me the same amount as a standard home? 20% more, 50% more, or 100% more? Which would you figure? Almost the same. Because if I exclude the, the uh, either going underground to conduit, which I'm responsible for the power line, or putting up the poles, if I exclude that, it's about 10 or 15% more. And given the fact that the solar panels are now half the price they were when I paid for them, <laughs> and we, I give a story, for those people who haven't here before, I give a story how when I first got my first solar panel, I was jumping up in the air, yeah, I got it for $10 a watt, boy, am I going to cost. Two years later, I fellow who sold me when the ten dollars said, oh we got a good deal on solar panels, want some more? I go, well, I don't know. how much is it? It's only seven dollars and fifty cents a lot. Well, I'm jumping up around again saying great seven fifty. <laughs> then when I built this place six years ago, I got the solar panels for two dollars and twenty five cents a watt. We have two, two, between two twenty five two no oh right this is a piece of cake I'm really gonna gain here now and now I can get the same solar panel for dollar ten no how much dollar twenty about now dollar it's about a dollar yeah, yeah it's about so dollar. It, it just it, it keeps going down so it now where the prices are not necessarily going down is in the other parts of which the biggest part is Santos. Human labor! <laughs> That's always going up. Yeah. It always goes up. Yeah. I read somewhere not too long ago that, that the comparison between the uh, thermal solar nope. and the thermal is now more cost efficient, just all more affordable take. Basically, yes, because, yes, because of the huge supply from offshore producers. So when I first started looking at Remember I used the term payback period? For those of you who don't know, that I mentioned the word about payback. And people were talking about, what's the payback period for a solar panel? I'm going, what's the payback period for your vehicle? Since it's never for a vehicle, whatever I give you for the solar panel is better than a vehicle. Are you going to believe me? Well, so the payback period when I first got my solar panel and started looking at solar uh, thermal, solar thermal was eight, eight, to, eight to nine years that I could repay and get all my money back. Solar photovoltaic was between 20 and 25 years. I've been here for six years. The solar thermal for hot water and so forth has already paid for itself a year or two ago. These ones will pay for themselves totally within the next few years. 
and if I had purchased them at a dollar or whatever, they would already have paid for themselves. So the restrictions, financial restrictions for going renewable energy are not what they used to be. And remembering that when you're buying these or being involved with or building a house, your, your costs are now. The idea is the house is going to think for itself and moderate the temperature, produce the power so that, so that every month you don't have to look and say, what, what did it cost me to live here? Hydro One says this, and, you know, or who, uh, Sparling says this, and all, you know, I don't have to look at that because I know I've already invested the money in something, and for my retirement, I don't have the extra income, uh, you know, to, to, to maybe help support the increased cost of my regular living. It's already been taken care of initially at the start. So the whole idea is that because the costs have come down, <coughs> I said the standard, I don't know what so the idea is that if you look at what it costs you initially, one can say, oh geez, the whole system costs you this much? Well, let's say when I was looking at $7.50 a watt, I may have easily said, well, these solar panels are modular, aren't they? So why don't I just get a few initially to help me with what I need as an emergency and build up. This is what many people have done in the past. They build up slowly. So all of a sudden, as time goes on, they learn more about how to make use of the energy they're producing. It's interesting that when you produce energy yourself, you become so much more efficient. How is that? You know, it's like boring someone else or someone else driving. You don't care how they drive as long as they get you safely. They don't, if you only get you know, two liters to the gallon, it doesn't matter. But if you're driving, you're paying for, the, for that gasoline, you're going to be as careful as possible because you want that 10 uh, liters per gallon or, or whatever, 10 per liter. So that people who say, well, I live in the city, I can only supply so much, I'll go under net metering, which is wonderful, or because when you're on net metering, you have the opportunity to some of the power that you are producing can go directly back into the house. Whatever you don't need, that's what you're going to get paid for when it leaves uh, your small little system. It passes on, what is it, two isolation switches and gets onto the grid. So, and then what ends up happening is if you're using more power, it just makes a U-turn and comes right back to the house that you're paying for. So, uh, and the good thing about net metering is that whatever you're charged for power, that's what you're going to get. You can't get, uh, what, what do they call, uh, since I don't have... You get a credit. Yeah, but I don't have hydro bills. So what do they call the various times of day, that the, the time of oh. day pricing? Time of use. Yeah, is time, time of use, use pricing? Well, on, on net metering, there is no time of use pricing. You're charged an even amount because most of your power that you're producing is for solar during the day when the cost is the highest. Why would they do that? So they're ripping everyone off that it's under net metering by saying we're going to give you the average price. Now, for wind machines, it's different. But that was that was an interesting reason why I it wasn't didn't have anything to do with me. The, deciding not to not to go to the microfit program but the net metering for me when i got involved there was no time of day pricing it was all even so that did not matter so um so basically uh because it's modular the solar allows you to not have to build your whole system at once if you want to that's going to be fine because you know and, and then you're in the state where i'm in geez I mean, if I waited, I could have got half these panels at half the price. You know, I'm not. I'm never going to think that way because whatever I did yesterday, I'm happy with. Whatever I do tomorrow, I'll deal with how how I know how I should be dealing with it tomorrow. So, I've seen so many people who, and, I, and again, I use the term the term off the grid does not do justice to everything else about the house and how one lives. It's this is the last and most and least important element of being off-grid. But we use off-grid to say, well, I'm not getting power from outside source. But it's how you make use of that power, because the more you, and Santos, who supplies, uh, who works for grassroots, or grassroots solar, grassroots, so you yeah. work or do you own it? Part owner. Part owner. Yes. So he will tell you now, uh, he may not agree as much with me as, 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 as he wants to, but he knows that, you know, I don't have to sell you as much if you don't need as much. 
So well, I always try to be reasonable with people. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't oversell I, I, anything. I, I, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Believe you wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. And, but uh, I turn. If you notice, I'm turning to him because I want to make sure that he's not going over. Well, <laughs> because he, he has a business in the area. He 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 has expertise in the area. Uh, I did not know him when I built the place, so that's why he, he wasn't uh, the person who did this for me. The person who who helped me with the solar was the person I was dealing with. Uh, happens in, his name was John Hogg. Interesting enough, the ESA inspector for this area is John Hogg. <laughs> but it's not the same John Hogg. But when the two of them met, I thought, what a great thing to, to say. John Hogg, I'd like you to meet John Hogg, and John Hogg, I'd like you to meet John Hogg here. You know, and they were going... Really? Are you, are you making this up? And I said, no, but I got them to laugh. And that was about, yeah. So, oh, the other thing that I was going to mention, that when we were building this house, I was responsible, I was like the unofficial foreman. And so somehow the unofficial foremans be become coffee getters for the people who work. And I found that one day I went to get coffee for them and they were building it. And I, I must have snuck up on him because it, like, there was machinery going on. And I heard him talking and I, was, and I just snuck because there was a big tree right there so they didn't see me. And the fellow says to the, the truck over there, this guy is crazy. This house is going to last 300 years. How long is he, I mean, how egotistical is this guy to think he's going to be around for 300 years? <laughs> said, you know, I mean, what's the matter with this guy? And so I went up to them and I said, hey, anyone want coffee? Oh, by the way. Any of you uh, agree, uh, believe in the philosophy of uh, karma and reincarnation? Well, I hope that in my next lifetime I can come back. Maybe I'll be around and maybe I'll be able to buy this. <laughs> I, I was joking and the people were going, oh, he is weird. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I mentioned to the other people all over here. Now, we only have a handful from the first group because we had, what, eight, 16 or 18 people from the first group. But they had to go. Um, so the philosophy for this house was a philosophy I really enjoyed when I went to some First Nations um, uh, powwows and meetings and so forth. With the whole concept that this house is built.